everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the very first baby tech session. We are going to be covering breakthroughs in baby tech, health, safety, and on the go. So today I have the pleasure of introducing Rachel Rothman. Rachel is a technical and engineering director for Good Housekeeping Institute, which is a legendary consumer product evaluation laboratory that was founded in 1990. Good Housekeeping is one of the most widely read Hearst publications where Rachel oversees the consumer product testing mythology, implementation and reporting for six labs. Rachel also manages the Good Housekeeping Seal and Green Good Housekeeping Seal product clearance and is responsible for all of the consumer tech, home improvement, auto, and toy coverage in Good Housekeeping Magazine. So she is a very busy lady. So please help me in welcoming Rachel to the stage where she will be introducing her panel. Thank you so much. Gonna take a seat over here. So as uh, Shanna was saying, I have uh, a great oversight of seeing a lot of things that are emerging within the consumer technology space. And as we're seeing at CES, as indi indicative as it becoming the Consumer Technology Association, it's not just CE anymore. We have auto, we have retail, and now we have beauty and we have baby products. And I think it's so fantastic. So I'm gonna hand it off to my really impressive panel and we'll go down the line. We'll start with Melissa. If you can say your name, why you guys are here, and you know, we'll, we'll get things going. Great, thank you for having us. Uh, hi, I'm Melissa Hanna, um, founder and CEO of Mommy. We are a telemedical health services company. Uh, we provide ongoing postpartum support for new moms from birth to birthday, from the day they get home from the hospital throughout the whole first year. And so that includes things like breastfeeding support, nutrition, um, mental health support, birth recovery, and of course, pediatric questions as well. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Andrew. I'm from Australia. I'm a medical doctor as well. And, he wins um, automatically with the accent. Sorry, guys. Well. If you can't hear me, I don't, if you can't, can't understand me, I don't blame you. Um, so I'm the founder and CEO of ClinicCloud, um, which I founded with my best mate from medical school uh, a few years ago. And uh, I'm here because we're launching our first product. It's a ClinicCloud connected medical kit, which I have in my hands. Um, and hope you don't mind me doing a bit of show and tell. Uh, this, is, uh, uh, it's, this is a digital uh, stethoscope over here. Uh, I'll, I'll grab it out. <laughs> uh, and uh, it also, this is a digital stethoscope, and this is a digital thermometer. And both of these are designed for consumers to use at home. They work with telemedicine, so the idea is mum at home can um, take a recording through their smartphone, through our smartphone app, um, and uh, send it either to their doctor, the recordings, uh, or to Doctor and Demand, who are one of our partners for telemedicine. Um, the stethoscope in particular records heart and lung sounds, just as a doctor would hear it in the clinic. So it feels just like almost an in-person visit. Fantastic. Uh, I'm going to dive into a bunch more questions in a little bit, but we'll go yeah, on yeah. to Willie, just so we can have everyone explain okay. who they are first. So my name is Willie Wu. I'm the founder and CEO of Buddy Tech. So it was about three years ago. I was at Six Flags over Texas with my wife. We lost our, our youngest daughter. She was six, six years old. And uh, we did find her at the end, but it was definitely, definitely a parent's worst nightmare. And that particular incident inspired me to build a product called Buddy Tag. So Buddy Tag is a child safety wearable that helps prevent lost child and helps, pre and helps prevent drowning. So it so alerts you whenever the child gets too far away from you so you don't lose the child. Also it alerts you when, whenever your child falls in the pool or falls into a lake and submerged in water. In about 10 seconds, our app was on the alarm. So it helps prevent drowning. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Shireen Yates. I'm the founder and CEO of Six Sensor Labs. About 10 years ago, I started to get really sick. No one knew why, and then a few years later, I was diagnosed with a bunch of food allergy sensitivities and found eating out and eating socially very stressful. I was inspired to empower people to better understand um, what they're eating and uh, inspired to start Six Sensor Labs. So we started the company a few years ago out of MIT. We're developing portable devices that help people test their food for allergens, and we're starting with gluten. Um, and very excited to be here at Baby Tech. Huge potential for, for parents to make sure they're keeping their kids healthy. 
Fantastic, thank you so much. Such an impressive group here. And I think um, right now it's really a prime time. We have an aging population. We have more babies than ever before. You know, it's, it's a really great time for it. Was there something about this moment in time because of the technology, because of the market, you know, what was the impetus for right now for you guys? Why now, you know, are we seeing beauty and baby technology when it was never here before? I'll just jump in here. For us, for Six Sensor Labs, we saw there was this growing awareness of figuring out how food affects you. People were looking at food as medicine, um, and parents were becoming much more aware of how food was affecting their children. In fact, we've seen a 50% increase among food allergies among children in the last 15 years in the US alone. And part of that is due to increased prevalence, but also increased awareness. So it was really just that awareness piece and the accessibility of technology to empower consumers, make the detection faster, cheaper, more portable. Um, so that's what really inspired us. Uh, a, a key thing here is trust. How are you guys going to all build upon that? You know, you're saying that you're going to be able to detect gluten, but how are people going to be able to trust you for it? Uh, do you want to maybe take I that I can one? definitely take that one, yeah. Um, so the, the question around trust and trust building among consumers. Trust is everything for us. We're building a brand around trusting your food. And so for us, it's key to uh, publish third-party data, validation data, comparing our technology to trusted sources of testing food, which we're going to be publishing um, in a few months here. So it's really about also getting the product out in the hands of, in the hands of consumers, having them test, and sharing their results as well. Andrew, do you want to maybe speak to some of the things that you're doing in terms of people understanding that this is, you know, more or less a medical grade device that you now have in your home? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so we, these devices are actually regulated devices, a class two devices. So, uh, we just got our Health Canada certifications, um, expecting FDA clearance pretty soon, as well as CE mark. Um, so, all those things build trust. Uh, but for me, I think the biggest thing is that. Um, and I, and I think because it is a new technology and it's a medical technology, endorsement from physicians, endorsements from uh, groups, uh, third, party, third party recommendations, be that kind of the uh, uh, websites that mummy bloggers go to, uh, 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 be that uh, doctor um, information websites, those kind of, um, and ju journal publications, those kind of uh, places recommend and endorse us. So those are the kind of things we use to build trust. Uh, we also, um, similarly, uh, we partner with uh, physicians and with hospitals to um, endorse what we're doing. Uh, so because we're a health services company, what we're really looking to uh, build with customers is a relationship that's ongoing throughout the baby's first year. And in order to do that, we really need to have partnerships with all of the other practitioners and uh, community members that are involved in that new family's life. So 75% of the members on our platform actually heard about us through their private practice doctor or through the hospital where they delivered. And that's a really big stamp of approval for us uh, to have members Nice plug for my brand, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, and, and to have, um, Right, to, to have members come and ask questions and know that they're going to get answers from licensed, credentialed, and highly trained practitioners on our platform. I'm going to jump right on top of that because you mentioned community, and I think that that's huge. And I know that you know the community, particularly in your product, is something that you leverage. Do you want to talk a little bit about the people who are on it? There's no greater market for parents and mothers wanting to connect and talk to you know other mothers and other people who are in that stage. Right, thank you. Uh, so our community is two-sided in that we've got this wonderful network of practitioners um, with a variety of credentials and expertise that can provide support at every step. Because you may not need an ongoing relationship with a nutritionist, but you may need to talk to someone in a really crucial moment in those first few months of figuring out how to produce more milk if you're a breastfeeding mother or lose the baby weight if, you, if that's a personal health goal for you. Uh, and so having that community of practitioners is really key. But because motherhood is also a social experience, our platform allows you to connect with other moms across the country through virtual support support groups and online mommy and me classes, uh, which is a big hit among our, our um, community of moms. So you can ask private questions through your uh, HIPAA secure inbox to practitioners and also join those groups to connect with other moms and share stories and tips and tricks uh, on a weekly basis. Fantastic. Anybody else want to? I, I can yeah. jump into that. Yeah. Um, so for our tracking devices, uh, from our, we've been in the market for two years and uh, we from our market experience, we found that uh, kids with autism and special needs find a, uh, it has a great need for our products. And so we took a grassroots, grassroots effort by working very, very closely with the special need communities, such as the Autism Speaks or Autism Societies. And by 
giving our free body tag to, to kids and then get the words out for us. Do you guys mind actually talking a little bit about your interfaces? There's so much technology out there. It is so overwhelming. There's so much data. What are you guys doing to translate that information into usable information and not overwhelm parents? I, I know all of you. I've seen all of your products. They're all tremendous. And I look at it and I'm like, I could do this. This isn't overwhelming. So uh, for the people who are out here who haven't seen it, do you guys want to kind of briefly explain that, what you guys are doing? Sure, I'll, I'll speak to that um, and invite anyone to come over and check out the product actually at our booth to see. We've got a really simple user interface uh, that has really um, uh, three main calls to action. When a mom logs in, she can ask a question, join a support group, or book an, a private appointment. So we also do offer private telemedical consults with a variety of specialists on the platform, and those are covered by insurance. Uh, the other thing is that on your um, dashboard, you get recommended articles, videos, and personalized clinical advice that um, evolves every day with you and the baby as you log in, and we learn more about you and, and your personal health goals. So we want to make it as simple and as straightforward to use, because motherhood is stressful enough. You don't want to have to go in and then have to look for all the different places to get advice. We're trying to create a very streamlined, peace of mind, uh, heavy experience. Well, usability for us is uh, one of the uh, most important things we're doing. Um, these are, we're not the first ones to make stethoscopes or thermometers, but these are the first consumer grade medical kit. In particular, the uh, stethoscope is the first consumer stethoscope. And how we translate that into a usable experience is very important. Well, I welcome you to kind of check out our uh, booth and our product in detail later on. Um, but to say, we've put, put a lot of effort into kind of thinking about how would an everyday user uh, use a medical device as traditional being in the hand of the consumers. We put a lot of visual guides in, we write instructions, we put videos up. Uh, we make the devices themselves very intuitive in design. Um, we use kind of standard um, iPhone and, and, uh, and Android uh, uh, buttons and design and to try to just make it a, a simple experience. The data itself isn't that overwhelming. I think what we are proposing uh, in terms of a use case is mostly uh, uh, when you're sick, use this to get help or to record what's going on. So the data is something that, that consumers are actively looking for or actively want their doctors to be looking at. Um, so that in itself is something that's uh, less of a barrier for us. Uh, so we actually spent a lot of time on our app when we first developing our app. So our decision at the very beginning is make sure it's very intuitive, like Andrew said. And so what we, the approach we took is make sure it's, it's globally understandable. So, so what's, what, because we sell our products to all different countries and they will speak different languages. So what speaks to everyone? So symbols and graphics. So everything that we have on app is based on symbols and graphics. Anyone can look at it and figure it out real easily. It's not a lot of words in there, there's no, so you just, Look at it, slide it, different things around, you, get, you can read the data easily. I see Shereen nodding. She's like, yes, I want to jump on top of this one. So Yeah, usability yeah. is huge for us. Um, we took a really complex 10-step process and put it in a device that you can just, in one step as a user, take a sample of food, put it in a disposable capsule, and then put that in the sensor. And so we really took the complexity out of the user um, experience and put that all into the automation of the machine um, for the actual sensor. And also on the display, we, we knew that we had to have a product that a kid at a picnic table um, could understand as well as a, you know, a, a whole range of different demographics of people. Um, so we have a very simple user interface. If the protein is detected, uh, a sad face. If the protein is not detected, a smiley face. So we made it really, really easy to understand. A everyone understands that. Everyone understands that. That's a universal. While well, you still have the mic, yeah. why start with gluten? Great question. So um, we wanted to start with gluten because it's one of the largest markets and it's growing. Um, it's a very sneaky protein too. It just sneaks into a lot of meals um, that people, even when they're asking the wait staff, is this gluten free? We found that the pain point was really high. So it was just really a matter of the fact that it was one of the largest starting places and it was really hard to navigate. It also has a very clear detection level as well, correct? Yeah, great so, point. Um, so gluten-free, well, there's a nice definition of what that is in terms of the amount. It's 20 parts per million. 
for the other allergens and proteins we want to go after, it's not as clear cut. So it was a really, really great starting point. But you're going to go into other food categories as well. We correct? are peanut and dairy to follow in 2017 um, after gluten. And do you guys mind going into who this information is shared with? So the users are obviously able to see it, but then who else? Are you guys doing anything with this data on the back end? Are you going to be able to share it with doctors? Are other people going to be able to share it on your community? So you know, now you've taken this information, and then what? All right, so I'll, I'll go first. Um, so Everyone's like me, I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're, we're very regulated in almost everything we do. Uh, HIPAA, HIPAA compliance is a major thing for us, uh, as is EU data regulation. Um, so everything that's shared with uh, anyone is uh, expressly stated in our terms of use. So we use the data on our back end, anonymized, to do a certain amount of analysis. Um, Part of it is a validation set for some of the uh, machine learning uh, analysis we're doing around automation of diagnosis disease. Um, uh, but uh, on the user's side, they can share that data with their physician if they expressly say they want to. So it's the user's choice. Right, right. And they can share it directly with a telemedical service um, if, if that's what they want to do. And we make it very clear um, to them. And it's always the user's choice. Um, uh, and the user can choose not to share that data, they can choose to, to, uh, to keep it. And, I mean, that's, uh, that's the, the beauty of consumer healthcare. We have um, a, a similar approach in that we, well, we are a telemedical platform and so we are responsible for that data that we um, are preserving for users, for their benefit. Users can take the information off of the platform and share uh, the advice, the content, um, and any of the answers that they received from our practitioners with their, uh, with their doctors, so OBGYNs and pediatricians who we partner with. But primarily, we're a closed universe in that we do own this relationship with a new mom and that we're providing all the complementary or alternative healthcare support that she's going to receive in between her traditional checkups with an OBGYN or a pediatrician. Uh, so we really are in that, in that way um, leveraging this data to provide better care directly to our patient. Um, and they can do what they want with it beyond that, but most of that stays within our system. For Six Sensor Labs and NEMA, we wanted to make sure people could see what other people were testing. So the data side is very, very important in building up the whole internet of food. And to start, users can take a sample of food, test it, know right there, but then share that data result on their phone and tag where, what they ate, where they ate, and you can follow people with similar dietary profiles. So eventually, when you have this whole data set of everyone testing very different things, um, you can go beyond the menu offering or beyond the package and see what did this actually test for. That's fantastic. So this is an industry that people are a little bit wary of, I know. So in terms of marketing and kind of the education around it, are you guys doing anything in terms of the messaging, uh, certain ways in which you're communicating it, or different avenues that you're taking? Well, um, I mentioned earlier that the uh, most of our patients are being referred to us by their practitioners, but that's not the only place that they hear about us. Um, our community of moms uh, is, has been amazing building that out. Most of it has been through word of mouth happening both at the practitioner level, but also just among moms in the community uh, and not just within their um, sort of local neighborhoods, but moms are online, they're on Twitter, they're on Facebook, they're telling each other about their experiences on our platform. So, so far that's been um, how we've grown and, and it's been wonderful to get those testimonials shared with other moms nationwide. So for those of you guys who have been along for a little bit or had other products or kind of pivoted and are now here, is there anything that was super shocking for you? Did you ever have like a customer service call from hell or, you know, is there ever, was there like an aha moment where you realized, I thought I was going to do this and now I'm going to do that? And, and Any of you? We have, oh, I can share one that was really actually quite impactful for our <laughs> practitioner community. Um, because we are uh, sort of in between this, this middle space of pediatric and maternal health care providing um, holistic postpartum care, we catch a lot of the stories of what's actually going on in that household uh, between the parents and the child and all of the additional family members who are participating in that child's development. And sometimes we get more of the story than your doctor gets in that maybe 10 or 15 minutes that you have them in the practice room with you. Uh, we had a patient whose baby was grow growing really quickly and the pediatrician kept saying, you know, this baby is almost being overfed. This baby's growing, gaining and thriving in the 90th percentile. And uh, 
through our engagement with, with the mom, we found out this mom is living in an apartment complex where her neighbors were not thrilled that this baby was crying or, you know, in the wee hours of the morning. And so she was, every time the baby even started to cry, she was putting the baby on the breast and feeding on an hourly <laughs> basis. And so she came to the platform, not with a question about breastfeeding, but a question about how to deal with her neighbors and explain to them, look, I have a baby. The baby is two months old and he's going to cry in the middle of the night. Sorry about it, you know? So once we got that part of the story, it was really easy to understand what was actually going on in the health story on the chart of this, this newborn. How everything's feeding into it. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of research is so important that Melissa is talking about, just really understanding your user beyond just the direct application of your product and how that fits into their life. You really want to understand how it fits into your life. And for us, when we started early on, we had a very different look to our product. We thought, this is cool, right? And we put it in the hands of folks, and people seemed hesitant to pull it out, and it, it seemed like actually a little too feminine for some of the guys that were using the product. Um, some of the kids didn't love the, the look and the feel, and so it really changed the direction of our industrial design. But understanding where are people gonna be carrying this? Where are they gonna pu be pulling it out? And in what context are they gonna be using it? Really had an impact on the direction that we took our design in. So you can go check it out at our booth over there, Six Sensor Labs. So prior to doing body tag, I was actually working on a Bluetooth product that's to keep track of your keys and your phones. And uh, but as I mentioned earlier, I lost my child. There's six. there's no greater possession than your child. Yeah, that you're, yeah. I think my child's more precious <laughs> yeah. than my keys Anything. and my phone. So so we quickly changed our direction. I said that that was my aha uh. moment. And uh, I often call my daughters, "You're the creator, body tag," because without you, I would not be here today. Uh. You know, pushing the products. <laughs> So what's next for you guys? I know you're going to enter into a few other allergies. Are you going to stick with just the NEMA as one particular product, venture into some other things? I'll, I'll let Shireen go first, then you guys can kind of talk about where you see your platforms and products going. Yeah, so we definitely think of ourselves as a, a creating a platform to help people better understand food and nourishment. And we're starting with gluten, extending into other allergens, but also really interested in food safety, pathogen detection, bacteria detection, um, and also providing solutions for both for the commercial side of the ecosystem, for restaurants and food suppliers. And so we started with consumers because that was such a visceral pain point, but extending beyond that and really focusing on the data extraction layer. So eventually we'll, have, we'll be building the internet of food. So for children's wearable, uh, so the, the most basic stuff right now is the tracking and GPS. But in the future, it's going to be a lot of integration of uh, thermometers and heart rate monitors and UV sensors. So that's you're going to see a lot of evolution coming going going forward. That you will see new products that's going to be even more advanced than what we have today. Uh, for us, it's a combination of uh, software and hardware features. Um, on the software front, we really want to make uh, our app a great experience for our users, one where they can use to uh, manage their health in a holistic sense. So right now, it pulls in data from our stethoscope, our thermometer. We want to be able to uh, make that a useful experience by adding things like uh, medication tracking, uh, giving people a more social experience, etc. But it, in addition to that, we also want to make the uh, the hardware experience, one where it's a holistic experience, one where we can recreate the, home, the, the clinic in the home so that you, know, you can actually get a, most or every uh, kind of common ailment uh, treated and diagnosed from the home. Um, and that takes a more sense than what we have now. Um, but uh, it's something where we're in the work deciding what exactly is the most useful next device. And, I have a few ideas. And as everyone who's seen the show floor, it's the internet of everything out there. And I think you're all kind of touching upon it, that it's when all these things play in nicely together and that they're you know, working harmoniously together and creating this holistic understanding, not right. only of how to use it, but also of self. So you're, you're sleeping better, you're eating better, you're working out better, you're just being better all around because you're thinking of it not in isolation, but as it relates to your entire life. And Melissa, if you want to want to go ahead, I apologize. <laughs> no, not, yeah. Oh, it's okay. Um, yeah, so for us, uh, right now we are just growing our community. We are growing nationwide. Um, and we're looking in two particular areas to grow over the course of this year. Um, with 
opportunities from going from online to offline because we are building communities of moms nationwide and they are um, actually finding each other through our support groups and saying, oh wait, you live in the same city I live in, we should meet up and go to the park together. So we're looking for ways to just kind of build stronger networks of moms um, around the new motherhood experience and partner with other companies who are doing things in that space, uh, either online or offline. And then also the reason why we came to CES is to look for devices that we can work with and uh, integrate into the platform because it is great to have all of these smart baby gear and baby gadget devices that um, can really uh, enhance the experience of being a new mom. Uh, but we also see that the services side needs to be there as well. So we can help make that data meaningful for you in the context of uh, your personal health goals and also uh, just your, your child's uh, you know, trajectory over that whole first year. So uh, we are looking for ways to integrate more of that information into the platform. So I know the four of you have been pretty much locked into your booth and people probably aren't letting you leave there, which is a wonderful thing as you're getting the product out there. Is there any product on the show floor you guys are like really jazzed to see that you're just, you know, you've heard about or that you're really interested in seeing out there or that you have seen and you're like, wow. Well, I was really excited to actually <laughs> meet, meet Shireen and actually see the uh, Six Sensor Labs uh, product, I have to say, because I had heard about Nima before I knew that <laughs> we were going to be on the panel together. I paid her a lot of money to say I that. Say I'm a big fan. I really <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I have, I have a few friends um, with severe gluten allergies, so I told them all I'm coming here to see this product, and then I found out we were speaking together. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have been locked in our booth big time, but I think what's been really interesting is to see the partnerships here, um, even between the smaller companies, bigger companies. Mimo's actually a great example. It's a, it's a smart uh, monitor for babies to track um, uh, you know, when a baby's sleeping, and, and you, there are a few of these companies out there, but they've partnered with Nest. And so if you have a camera already installed in your home and, and you can integrate it um, and sort of have that integration and you can see it with Fitbit 2 and Fitstar, Fitbit acquired Fitstar, the content provider, now they're integrating that tracking to more content so you can actually really not only track the Internet of Things, but start to figure out how's that going to modify my behavior. So I think the, the partnership piece has been really cool to see on the floor between bigger and smaller companies. I I think also what's going on generally in the smart home space and how it's it's starting to impact um, the baby care space. There there has been a divide for for a while now because you know it's okay if your um, you know your lighting system goes down or your speaker system connecting to your whole house goes down. It's not okay for your baby monitor to to fail. Uh, so that has been there's been some hesitance there for a while. And so this being the inaugural um, you know baby showcase is a really good sign of where the market is going and where the technology um, can go now with m much more stability in being able to provide this sort of peace of mind to parents. Are there any other products specifically in this sphere that you guys really like, that you like what they're doing? You, got, you guys show a wide range of things, but the, the sphere is so large. Is there anybody else that you guys kind of have your eye on? Uh, well, we're looking at the smart breast pump market, which <laughs> Say a, a breast pump can be smart. Uh, you'd be surprised how many ways a breast pump could have could be enhanced and and is being enhanced now uh, for breastfeeding mothers. I'm intrigued. Mothers. Do you mind going into a few? Sure. I I've now seen some products. Uh, one with an accelerometer in the tubing to figure out how fast you're pumping your milk. Um, <laughs> there's another one with a caloric counter, kind of to to look at the viscosity and the and the caloric quality of uh, breast milk, and then provide. Um, advice and support around uh, it, nutrition to, to create better breast milk for your baby. So these are some um, interesting companies that have approached us and said, well, you know, we're collecting this information from moms, but really you need a lactation consultant as part of that story to provide ongoing support and advice and counseling um, to be able to achieve a breastfeeding goal. 66% of breastfeeding mothers do not actually meet their own breastfeeding goals in, in that whatever timeline they said, I want to breastfeed for three months or six months, and, and unfortunately don't make it to that point either for a number of different health reasons. So uh, we have that services side, but we need the products that are actually starting to get the other half of the story to people to be able to provide the support for moms. Uh, so I've been coming to the show for over a decade. Um, my first one was in the womb. So I've you know, kind of seen the evolution of everything. And I want to say that this year, you're act actually seeing practical applications of things. You're not seeing things that are saying, this is the concept, this is the future, but it's happening now. And it's not just products that are, you know, churning out information to you, but doing it in very useful, practical ways. And, you know, something like your product is then able to provide the service and the advice. You're not just giving them the information. You're telling them what they can do with this and synthesizing it for them in a very useful way.
traditional way. So something that I'm always fascinated by is the insurance component with this. How is that going to play into what you guys are doing? Will, will they give you breaks? Are they you know, afraid of these products? What, what have your interactions with, with, with the insurance companies been? It, it has been such a year <laughs> transitioning from being in private beta where um, in 2015, I approached a lot of insurance companies and said, hey, we've got this service that makes it a lot easier for a mom to get the care she needs in her house and not run to urgent care and ER all the time with every little baby concern. And insurance company said, yeah, we're not sure yet. They're now calling us <laughs> and they're saying, can we provide this as a, um, an added value service to our patients because they now start, they've started to see that for the cost of care, for a patient to get access to ongoing support for that whole first year, we're saving insurance companies millions in unnecessary and unavoidable expenses uh, that happen in the middle of the night when most of the panic happens and that baby's up and you're up and you're thinking, is it time to go back to the hospital? Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's really been a you know, 180 degree change for us. And several of our uh, services, private video consults and phone calls are already covered by insurance. We're looking now to, to cover the whole service and make that a full package for parents. Are we talking about uh, liability or redemption? I will, I will leave it as broad uh, as you would like to discuss. So uh, I think both, both aspects of, of it are really interesting. Well, liability. Sorry. Ah, much better. So uh, liability insurance is very easy to deal with. Hello, Andrew. Uh, hello. Um, I was wondering why you couldn't hear us. Um, but anyway. Should we do the whole thing again? Yeah? yeah. Uh, so liability insurance is really deal, uh, easy to deal with consumer products. Um, being a medical product makes it more expensive. Um, obviously, for every partnership we do, uh, we specify, uh, we have associate agreements which specify you know, what we're responsible for, what our uh, partner is uh, responsible for, so that the liability is very clear on both sides. Um, uh, for the actual insurance itself, it's, um, for a device like ours, it's, it's, you know, it's intuitively uh, could save insurance co companies money, and therefore could be a very easy thing for them to uh, subsidize. Um, and for us, it's really about, you know, we've only been shipping since November. So uh, for us, it's really about demonstrating that this works, this works it, well. Yeah. This, actually saves, uh, this actually saves insurance money. And there's a, there's a whole different debate going on at the moment, whether telemedicine and devices that make healthcare services more accessible and easier saves insurance money, it actually costs them more. So that's something that we, we, you know, we have to demonstrate that you know, look, it's, it saves the money. At least it delivers better care, uh, which is the important outcome that we're all after. We're exploring partnerships with insurance companies as well. Um, we find that um, billions are spent a year paying for, by both consumers and providers to help pay for reactions to food, food allergies, hospital visits. Um, so, you know, if you can actually anticipate and, and save on some of those impacts um, on the healthcare system by knowing what's in your food before you put yourself in that position, um, we think there's been a lot of interest. So I was given a quick flag. So before I open it up to a quick Q&A, uh, are there any kind of parting words that you guys want to leave with everyone? Is there anything that we didn't get to touch upon that you want to make sure is set up here? No? All right. Anyone in the audience have any questions for any of the panelists up here uh, related specifically to beauty, uh, to baby tech, to the products that they have, more generally at the show? No? Well, I wish you guys all a tremendous CES. Uh, to all the ladies out there, I hope you have your blister protection. Uh, everyone has their Mophies all charged up. And have a wonderful rest of the show. And thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it.